gates and inputs and outputs to this uh, to this unit. So we have the input gate, uh, which decides uh, what is coming in, and then we have an no, the input modulation gate decides what is coming in and then the input gate decides whether what we want to put in there should be allowed to go in and partially overwrite the current value of the cell. And then there's the output gate that decides whether we should write this out to the write the content of the cell to the hidden state. And you can say decide what decides when you have to when you update this is decided uh, by the content, context, and the context is defined by the uh, by the hidden state at the previous time step, and the hidden state at uh, the same time step for the uh, recurrent layer, one layer below uh, the layer we are looking at now. Right. So that means that actually we can we what we how we operate these gates depends on the hidden states, right? So this is kind of a complicated system, but it should be, as, as always with deep learning, we learn it by gradient descent, by backpropagation, to, uh, to reproduce a, a, a supervised training set, right? So actually, we are more or less implementing here like a computer program with soft gates. I should also say the gates are soft in the respect that, that we replace kind of the logic gates of normal hardware with a, a sigmoidal a logistic function in order to make something that is differentiable. But this kind of computer-like program is learned from the data. Yes, a, a little bit simpler uh, version of this that uses less memory and and therefore is also faster on a computer is this gated feedback recurrent neural networks. But it's essentially the same idea. Um, so, so we have these two, so sigma here is the logistic function. So these R and C uh, are the two gating functions. And you can see that our, now I use A to denote the, the, uh, the input to the, to the, to the uh, activation function. You can see that, uh, or kind of the pre-second active, uh, activation, you can see that this that's on the on the final line that this is decided by by the two gates. So uh, the C gate decides whether you actually just retain. If the C gate is zero, then you retain what the value from the previous time step. And if it's if it's zero, if it's one, then you actually update it with this a tilde, which you compute from from the partially from the input. Uh, from the, at, at that time from the input data from that time uh, and then from a gated uh, value from the previous time step. So you can see uh, part of it is, is as it was in our, in our basic uh, recurrent neural network that I explained in the beginning called the Elman network. It was the first, Elman was the first to propose uh, this extension of uh, a few forward neural networks, but you can also see that we have these added uh, R and C as gating functions that can retain uh, things in the memory of the recurrent neural network for a longer time without having... Of course, the Elman network can be proven to be like a universal approximator that can learn any function, but this is an explicit construction that makes it easier to keep things in memory for several time steps. Yes. So, can we, like, uh, can we look into a recurrent neural network like we looked into uh, the convolutional neural network? Here is some work by Kapathy al on looking at a, a, a so-called language model. So, language model is essentially a model that either from previous text predicts the next word or here it's done on character level so you just want to predict the next character in the text and here the text in this case is uh, Tolstoy's One Piece. We have trained the recurrent neural network to be able to generate and memorize uh, recurrent, uh, the recurrent neural network uh, One Piece. And you can see here we look at one that we color code the value inside the cell and you can see this cherry-picked cell 
is actually keeping memory of how far in the sentence we have come because we also uh, asked the network to predict character return so you can see that when when we get get close to the uh, where it has to uh, make a line break then this cell is kind of turned off so that it actually remembers how far it has written since the last character return then there's another uh, uh, cell found here. Uh, the next example is a cell that is actually turned on when we are inside quotation marks because if you start a quotation mark then of course you also should be able to predict that it ends at some point and this cell has learned to keep track of whether we are inside or not inside uh, a quotation. And it's also been trained on on uh, the Linux kernel, so here you can see another cell that also kind of does the same as this thing with quotations, but here it's inside comments or quotes uh, in the in the computer code.